Welcome back. There are some images that become indelibly linked to an event or a moment. This week, that heartbreaking photo of a father and his 23-month-old daughter who drowned trying to cross the Rio Grande became a symbol of the crisis at the border. This week, Congress passed a $4.6 billion humanitarian aid package for the border. It was a victory of sorts for Senate Republicans and a defeat for progressive Democrats who felt the bill didn't do enough to protect children housed at migrant centers. Joining me now is the number three Republican in Senate leadership, John Barrasso of Wyoming. Senator Barrasso, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks for having me, Chuck. That photo. Yes. Sad. Who's tragic. The, who's, is, is there anybody, is, is there anybody to blame for this death? I mean, what, how do we prevent this, this? Yeah, um, okay? Yeah. I mean, we, why didn't we prevent this? I mean, I'm a father, I'm a doctor, you, you never want to see this. And we see this, I think it's very important that that was published. The thing is that there are many more dying just trying to get to the United States, taking that very President long blame Democrats and dangerous. For that. Is that was that fair? I don't blame anyone for this. We have a system, though, that is incentivizing people to take a very long, dangerous trip where people are getting trafficked, raped, murdered, uh, used for trafficking drugs. We need to stop the incentives that tell people if you get here, we're going to keep you here and give you more. Things. We need to do things, and look, there's bipartisan legislation in progress with Lindsey Graham and, and uh, Dick Durbin to try to say, let's have people who want to come here for asylum apply from where they are. Let's make sure that children can stay with families a longer period of time so we can adjudicate some of these things. There's actually bipartisan progress being made, but we had to take eight weeks to get a bipartisan humanitarian relief bill passed because some people are saying it's a manufactured you, crisis. This is a real okay. humanitarian crisis. But are you, now, are, you, are you now convinced that you can't enforce your way out of this crisis? Because right now it does seem as if the Trump administration just thinks if they just tighten the screws, if they just, do, do, if they just make it harder to hear, it'll slow uh, the flow. It hasn't slowed the flow. It's only increased it. They thought family separation was going to work. That didn't work. Do they now, do you guys, do you know now know that just enforcement only isn't going to stop this? No, there are a couple parts. Yes, you have to enforce the law. You can not just ignore the law, but you have to eliminate some of these incentives that are pulling people to take unnecessary, very dangerous risks. So why get rid of the lives? aid in Central America? That was a, talk about an incentive, that a disincentive. If there's, if, if you take away all that aid, these countries can't do anything about their, the horrible conditions there. If you take a look at some of those countries, even if you were to increase the aid, there's no belief that I have that it would actually get fully used. There's corrupt, corruption there. You need to do a better job with disincentivizing people to come to the United States by allowing them to apply okay. for asylum elsewhere, by trying to treat specifically uh, the young children who are coming here unaccompanied. No matter what country they come from, they ought to be treated the same. We ought to be treating them the same way as we are with the people coming from Mexico. Now, the House Democrats passed a, a bill, on the, uh, in their version of the bill, they had basically stricter um, yeah. standards on how the money was to be used. Mm -hmm. um, the Senate rejected those new stricter standards. Why? What's, why do you trust this administration to use the money as it's intended to do when you've appropriated money and he has said, forget it, national emergency, I don't care what you're telling me. Why shouldn't you want more parameters on how this money is spent? Well, the Senate passed a bill 84 to 8. You talk about bipartisan legislation, I mean, in your long history, how often do you see something pass the Senate 84 to 8? That was the $4.6 million, primarily humanitarian aid, also to give folks at the border more uh, resources. It was the right bill, and to have that held up by the far left Democrats in the House who tried to boycott it, I think is wrong. But they held it up for reasons of they, they, they feel as if, look at, look at what's going on in Homestead. Number one, why are we giving money to a private contractor to run something that we don't, we're not able to, uh, because it's a temporary facility, it doesn't fall under the same regulatory standards as a government facility would run into. And it turns out that's a big problem, not a small one. 84 to 8 in the United States Senate shows significant bipartisan agreement with this being the solution for the humanitarian relief that You're comfortable need. letting this, this private is, letting this, this private uh, prison or what, these private prison companies run these these private shelters? I'd rather have uh, the government and government funding approaching all of these things, making those. We have to cut down the incentives, but the problem, as you know, is getting worse. There have been more detentions, and it's still June, 
this year alone than all of last year, all 12 months. The numbers are getting worse. The red lights are flashing. We have to do more to prevent people from taking these dangerous journeys to the United States with the promise of free health care if they get here. If you get here, you get to stay because you never have to show up for a hearing and you get to stay in the United States and people will and you will not be removed. I think the incentives are right. asking people to take dangerous journeys which result in such a sad and tragic loss of well, life. I want to go back to the situation in Homestead. This company's profiting off of this crisis. Should any entity be profiting off this crisis? No, and you know more about the, the situation in Homestead uh, than I do, but no, people shouldn't be profiting off so of why, this. So why, why allow this why allow this facility to even stay open at this point? If they haven't been able to, if they are treating kids this poorly, not getting them soap, why are they going to get more um, government aid to run this facility? This talks about the need for actually getting this bill passed. It took us eight weeks to get to a point where we could get an agreement that this is truly a humanitarian crisis, not just a manufactured crisis. So it's taking a long time to get that buy-in. We need bipartisan solutions. I've been working with Ron Johnson on a, on a solution through Homeland Security. There's bipartisan efforts. We need actual solutions that will work, mm -hmm. that will provide relief, but will also make sure that the incentives are removed of people trying to come here under these circumstances. Right, I want to talk about the president's trip overseas. There's a bit of a ceasefire, if you will, in the trade um, talks between China and the United yes. States. But part of that ceasefire was the president now agreeing to let Huawei um, the telecommunications company in China to buy materials from U.S. companies. And here's what Marco Rubio put on Twitter. If President Trump has agreed to reverse recent sanctions against Huawei, um, he has made a catastrophic mistake. It will destroy the credibility of his administration's warnings about the threat posed by the company. No one will ever again take them seriously. He presented it as if he was hoping it wasn't true. It turns out this is true. How concerned are you about this? Well, I'm very concerned about Huawei. I think they are a threat to our national security. So the president security. made a mistake? I think Huawei is a threat to the national security of America. I know the president is a deal maker. He is working on this. Uh, I would not allow Huawei certainly into our country. He's making decisions about what our country, our country and companies can sell overseas to Huawei. I have, to me, Huawei in the United States would be like a Trojan horse ready to steal more information from so, us. So I assume then you, you don't even want this then, right? What the president did, you believe is a mistake. I believe the ceasefire with trade with China was important. Okay. We need more trade. We have product in Wyoming we want to sell overseas in terms of energy, in terms of trona, in terms of beef. So we will look, but look the, for those but the, but customers. But this Trojan horse me, that you just called a Trojan yes. horse is now back. The is that worth it? The president said that would be the last discussion point of the discussion on trade. Let them work through the other parts of this. But to me, Huawei should not be in the United States. So did it con doesn't it concern you that the president is not ruling it out? It does concern me. Okay. Yes. All right. Senator John Barrasso, number three Republican in the Senate. Thanks for coming on and sharing your views. Always thanks for having me. You. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.